the underpowered hour on this week's show it's a father's day special as i'm joined by my daughter cooper for an in-depth land rover interview full of hard-hitting questions in land rover history and now here's the show Welcome to the Underpowered Hour. I'm Steve Barris, mild-mannered television executive by day and Land Rover collector by night. You can find out more about our cars and what we're working on at thebarriscollection.com or follow us on Instagram at thebarriscollection. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Ike Goss. Thank you to everyone joining us today. I own and operate Pangolin 4x4 in Springfield, Oregon, where we live and breathe Land Rovers. Check us out online on Facebook, Instagram at Pangolin. 4x4. Let's get started. All right, Cooper. Well, it is Father's Day, and we thought we would start a brand new tradition here on the Underpowered Hour, where Cooper, my daughter, would come on the show and would ask some hard-hitting Land Rover questions, give the show over to Cooper to do some interviewing of her own. So Cooper, how, how are you feeling today? How's, how's, how's your Father's Day been so far? Mine's been great. It, it's been good. And yes, yours has been great. I got you flowers and a bunch of other stuff. It's Plus true. Plus a grill. So yeah, yeah a tiny little grill for the camping situation, mm-hmm. which is awesome. We've been looking for a little portable outdoor grill for our off-road camper and uh, you guys got me a little coleman portable grill that we're gonna have to figure out how to affix to the outside of the camper so that was very cool i appreciated that very much and yeah now you guys are going to the beach and i'm gonna stay and do some well i'm gonna edit the podcast what better father's day uh, present than editing the podcasts all right well let's kick it off what have you got prepared for today a couple questions and my lightning round questions of my own oh my goodness a cooper barris lightning round edition questions that is that's pretty pretty intense i don't know if i'm ready okay first question Mm -hmm. any land driver that you could have what would Mm -hmm. you want Man, if I could have any Land Rover, ooh, geez, that's a super hard question because, you know, there's so many different ones that I would really, really like. But, you know, I'm lucky enough that I have a lot of the ones that I really, really, really want. I'm lucky enough to have a Camel Trophy truck and a couple of the ones that that I really want. But I think, let's see, I would really like a 2B forward control. I would like a Lights Behind the Grill pre-1500. Yeah. Series one, I would like a, I would like a real G4 Challenge Freelander because uh, our not G4 the, edition not one. Not the Land Rovers in the back here? Yeah, not, not, well, that's pretty good. I like that one a lot, but I think another, another Freelander would be nice. I'd like one with the removable top too. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say. I mean, the, the ultimate one, you know what I would like probably more than any other Land Rover, and it doesn't have to be a specific one, but I would really, really like one Land Rover that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth owned at some point. That one, that would be really neat. I would really like a Royal Land Rover that the Queen had owned at some point. That would be really cool. How about you? If you could have one Land Rover that isn't one of our Land Rovers, which one, which additional Land Rover would you like? I think I might go for the one that we saw on Instagram with like the zebra stripes. Oh the yeah, one that was, yeah, that one's cool. Like a zebra safari, like series yeah, three, series three. Yeah, I love those. They're so cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty neat. Our friend Richard but, has one, right? Yeah, he's nice. I like Richard. He's a good guy. But anyway, the favorite one that we have here is I'm gonna go with the eighty inch. Yeah, you like the eighty inch the most. That's your favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. How come it's your favorite one? I don't know. Just something about it. I just love riding in the 80 inch. Yeah. The 80 inch is the most fun car to ride. Yeah, it That's, really is. Yeah. Can't frown with the windshield down. That's exactly right. That is our motto. Literally, because literally you can't even like smile. You're just going. Uh, uh, That's true. You are. Yeah. Your face is being blown into a smiling shape. Yeah, that's right. It really is. What got you so into Rover cars? 
Oh, that's a great question. So back in the very early 90s, a gentleman worked for Grandpa named Jeff Marr. And Jeff Marr bought the Defender 90 that is behind you. The dream machine? In the dream machine. Later became the, the dream machine, the rally car. And I just loved it. I thought it was the neatest car in the whole world. It was right when that car came to North America. It was one of the very first Defenders that, that came to North America. And I really, really wanted a Land Rover. And Grandpa and Grandma decided that they were going to buy a Discovery, a Land Rover Discovery. And they bought one of the very first Land Rover Discoveries that came to Canada, the green Land Rover Discovery. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of it, but it was, it was one of the very okay. first ones. Yeah. And we liked that truck very, very much. It was, it was a lot of fun. And the motor blew up in that one. And then Grandma got another one. And then the motor blew up in that one. And oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. How was she like all those motors? Well, they were just Land Rovers. That's what they do. Mm, and yeah, so, yeah. 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 But so that's, you know, and then, and then I had the, the stage one was my first one. And then I had a military pickup truck. I had a Range Rover. I had all kinds of different, different cars back in Canada. But yeah, it was, it was that car right behind you that kind of started the real interest for the whole family, I think, in Land Rovers. And mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and, and we have that car and uh, mommy drove it in the Rebel. So it's a really important car for us. Yeah. Um, what about you? What got you interested in Land Rovers? That person right there. Yeah. Because you didn't have any choice because you grew up in one. First of all, these, I, if you die, I inherit these cars. You probably will not die of old age. You will probably die of doing something stupid knowing you. Yeah. At any moment. But anyway, you were the one who did this to me. You decided my fate. Yeah, you didn't really have any choice, hey? What was your favorite adventure that you've had in a Land Rover? Hmm, my very favorite. Oh, man, I've had so many adventures in Land Rovers. It's, again, it's really hard to ah. pinpoint one that I, I think is my most uh, favorite. I really liked going from one side of Scotland to all the way to uh, the bottom of England with mum last last year. That was really fun. I really like going to Rover Rendezvous with you every yeah. year. You and I go out to Rover yeah. Rendezvous every year and we do I do all have stuff Rover. to do at Rover Rendezvous next year. So I, well, I was told there was going to be horses. So. And there, there might be. Well, there might be. Yeah. So I, I like doing anything where I can get together with a bunch of other Land Rover people yeah. and a bunch of shitty old Land Rovers and just do Land Rovering, you know, just generally if it's camping or if it's trail running or if it's just standing around and talking about them or working on them or whatever, I think those are you know, those are those are always great. But yeah, I do like doing the big overland trips and uh, I think we have some pretty fun ones planned for the future so hopefully we'll we'll get to do some of those and you know and certainly it is fun getting the rally car set up for mummy every year and stuff like yeah. that okay what about you what's your favorite land rover adventure that you've been on i think probably the one that we went on when i was four you took me uh in i think i'm not sure which one it was i think dina mm -hmm. and you took me on a dirt trail and you went over this giant bump and my butt flew in the air Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was another one where you set your pants on fire. That was just recently, actually. Well, there's been Remember? so many. You've set your pants on fire multiple times. Yeah, I'm always doing But, that. like, my absolute favorite was probably, uh, this wasn't a Land Rover, but it was going to a Land Rover event. Mm -hmm. uh, we, Dad overestimated his powers of off-roading, and we were in the Lightning, the Ford Lightning, at... We were driving down the dirt road and he didn't see that there was like this like bump that maybe was like a foot tall and he just went right over it and it shot us up in the air. And uh, yes, I almost wet my pants. That was a major bump. That's true. That was, mm -hmm. and we had all the raffle items for the uh, Land Rover event. Oh, we ah. did. So yeah. all the boxes were kind of squooshed. Yeah, it was. I, I, I gave out the Lego box and they were like, why is my box squished? And I was like, it's a long story. Okay. It's a long story, yeah. But there was, yeah, we got some pretty serious air in the in the Ford we Lightning. Did, yeah, which, yeah, that's trail tested now. So, so there you go. Uh, Doing some serious rallying in the in the Lightning, but mm. yeah, no, that was a good time. Well, we've definitely got lots of fun, lots of fun stuff in store 
Going forward, we're going to maybe go up to Alaska. We're thinking about driving up to Canada. And of course, up to see Ike and Jenna and Linus and Maddie more. As, uh, we just uh, came back. What did you think of going to the the rally up there in Oregon that we just came back from the Pacific Northwest Anarch Rally. It was really fun. Yeah. Did you play with some fun kids up there? What did you do? Yeah. I met two kids. I can't remember the other brother's name, but I remember one was named Zachary. And we found this little creek and we decided we were going to make a bridge out of some old driftwood we found floating around in the pond. Didn't that go well? I got my socks wet. And did, did you go and do any driving with mommy or with, with Jenna? Jenna? Yes, I did. I went in the cow. The cow is just this ridiculous white car with rust spots. And it has a cowbell and a cow horn. It's the best thing in the world. I almost flew out the back. It's an 80-inch Land Rover, too? Yeah, it is. Nothing like uh, an 80-inch Land Rover. They're the best. Especially when they go, moo. Also about Land Rover adventures. We were driving down in some vintage Land Rovers, and Jenna pulls us over in this little parking lot with some porta-potties. The porta-potties were overflowing. Ugh. Terrible, terrible. And we get out. I put on my sweater because it's cold, and we hike down this trail. Next thing I know, there's a giant waterfall in front of me. Oh, my goodness. It was maybe 200, 300 feet. It was huge. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Was that when you drove uh, from Springfield to the rally? Yep. Did you drive with mom in the Series 3? Yes. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. For a daily driver, would you prefer a D90 or an 80 inch? Mm, well, it depends on one. if I had to pick one. And I wasn't driving like huge distances. Like if I was in Springfield, let's say, I would absolutely drive an 80 inch every day. I yeah. I love driving the 80 inch. It's my favorite car. That but like or, instead of having like the lightning. Yeah, I did drive a D90 every day as my daily driver for a very you did. long time. You did. And I I thought that was great and still do. And I do often drive the 80 inch as my daily driver, unless I have to drive into the city, in which case I do take the pickup truck. I take the uh, lightning. So yeah, I mean, I tend to just take whatever car is at the back of the workshop and whatever's in front of the door, which looks like right now it's the yellow wagon. So that would be the one that I would take. Just depends on what's at the back of the thing. But yeah, if I had a choice, I would rather drive the 80 inch pretty much anytime. But the D90 is a pretty nice uh, car to drive, especially now as it has the big race motor and everything in it. So it's a yeah. pretty, pretty fun car to drive. How about you? If you if you could drive one car every day, which one would you drive? That would go with the 80 inch. Yeah, you would do the 80 inch? Yeah. Yeah, it's the best, hey? Yeah, it really is. It really is. Yep. Yeah. Okay, next question. Which car you own is your favorite car? Which car that I own is my favorite car? Oof, it's so hard to pick. I love them all so much. You know, the the Defender has been the car that's been with us for the longest time, the Defender 90 we've had for the longest time. And it's been through a lot of different stuff with us. It's been through, you know, Mummy and I got married in that car. Mummy's taken it on the Rebel. I daily drove that car for years. The Camel Trophy truck is a pretty incredible car yeah, because that, that was really the first, is. you know, that's a real Camel Trophy car. And that's just, you know, gave us, you know, an opportunity to be a part of a really incredible community of people who collect them and who are, you know, involved in that community. And we've met some just some incredible friends there. You know, the 80 inch is just what a fantastic vehicle and was our first really you know, really original, really old Land Rover, and we've done a huge amount of restoration work on it. But yeah, you know, they all, they are all pretty fantastic. You know, the fire truck's great. The stage one's great. They're, they're all pretty fun. You know, the forward control is super cool. So if I had to pick just one, I would probably pick the Defender 90 because it's, it's sort of the, the one that's been always with us but with a close second being the 80 inch for sure, right yeah. right next to it. The the Landy being a close second. How about you? Which one, if you had to pick a favorite one, which is- 80 inch. 80 inch, no question. Landy's no your question. favorite? Yes, Landy is my favorite. I even made him a Valentine. It's over here on the wall. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've been with that car as long as you've been alive. I really have, yes. Oh. You you took me in as a baby. I mean, she's like this little nugget. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little nugget. Yeah. A nugget. It's true. It's true. You've been in that car your whole life. Yes. So, yeah. But second favorite, 
this yellow car the wagon. The wagon. You like the wagon, hey? The Linus yes, wagon? Yes, li- Linus wagon. He did not want to part with it. I just realized we don't have a tiny Ike on that car. Oh, we don't. But I we am going to turn tiny. the gear shift into a little Linus head, so. God. No. Yeah, he's been doing this. He scanned Linus's head. I'm turning lots of stuff into Linus heads. It's fantastic. It's going to be good. Okay. Last question before lightning round. Okay. All right. What's the okay. last question? If you had to choose one of these options, which one would you choose? Like, die or choose one. Ineos Grenadier or a Jeep? Oh, Ineos Grenadier for 100% sure. I think the Ineos Grenadier is actually a pretty great vehicle. I, you know, it's cool. I, yeah, I, like it. I, I know Mummy doesn't necessarily love them, but you know what? I actually, I, I like them, you know? I love yeah, the, the cool. Glendewagen, uh, the Mercedes yeah. version, and I, I think that the Grenadier is pretty cool. So do you like the Grenadier? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. But I would always rather prefer a Mini. Oh, yeah, a Mini over a Then Mini. both of those. Yeah, sure. The Mini is much cooler, yeah. yeah. Not that reliable, though. No. Okay, are you ready? Lightning round. Okay. Three, two, one. Would you want a wagon or a Camel Trophy truck? Mm-hmm. Camel Trophy truck. Okay. And for that car, gas or diesel, bro? Ooh, diesel, bro. Ah, diesel. Mm-hmm. Last one. Mm-hmm. How do you get gear oil out of your underpants? Mm, you know, I like to think that I'm sort of an expert on this now because I've heard maybe more responses than anything. But I think my favorite is just, you know what? Just let it be. Just let it be there, you know? What? Enjoy the lubrication and, you know, just, you know, there's only going to be more in the future. So why why try to mitigate it? Just embrace it, I think. I think just But, uh, like, that's fine. so unsanitary. Right. Well, Land Rovers right. are always unsanitary, so that's who right. cares anymore? You're just going to get more in there, so just leave it, yeah. you know? Just leave it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's hey. the right way to do it, so. Yeah. All right. I would just burn it. Just burn it. Yeah, burn it is a popular, that's a popular secondary thing. Or give it to someone else as a birthday present, and that's their responsibility. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Like, give it to Linus, maybe? Yeah, Linus. He would would wear it and not care. Well, a lot of his things are already waxed and oiled, so he might not notice. I am looking forward to land rovering with you this summer. I am looking forward to land rovering you with as well. We've got some really exciting trips coming up. We're going to take out the off-road trailer. We're going to try out our new EcoFlow air conditioner heater combo unit. So we'll have to do a little review of that on YouTube. Mm. Yeah, that'll be fun. And uh, yeah, so, and of course, we've got to get mom ready to go on the Rebel. And we've got a brand new car to reveal for that. A whole new partnership, a whole new sponsorship, a whole new everything. It's going to be a really exciting summer. It's going to be an exciting year. And uh, yeah, we've got lots of new YouTube content. There's actually two yes. new videos up there from Anarch. Yep. They've got a, there's a fun video of our good friends, Bob Steele and Bruce Fowler driving around the RTV course with uh, John Kostich in the back of the, oh, of the car. Very, very funny. And John and I did a little intro to those videos. So uh, head on over to YouTube and check those out. Those are up there now. And uh, if you haven't checked out the full review of yeah. the Anarch event, that was fun too. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Happy Father's Day, Coopy Doo. Thanks for a wonderful day. Thanks for being on the show. And I look forward to a very fun summer of Land Rovering with you. So until then, we'll see you soon. See you on the trail. The Underpowered Hour is produced by Liza Barris, Ike Goss, and me, Steve Barris. Pavel Svartov composed and performed our theme music. Consider supporting the show on Patreon, and if you already do, thank you. Your support makes the show possible. For even more, check out our Instagram or Facebook.